This conference will now be recorded. All right. Um, thank you for joining the City of Kingston's Arts Commission at our monthly meeting. Today is May 14th. My name is Adriel Farr, Director of Art and Cultural Affairs for the City of Kingston and organizer for our virtual meeting. Uh, before we begin our meeting, we're just going to go over a few meeting guidelines to help us navigate this system as efficiently and respectfully as possible. We ask that members of the public and press remain muted and off camera for the length of the meeting. As organizer, I reserve the right to mute anybody who unmutes themselves. Uh, commission members and city staff will control their own will control their own mute button. Good practice: <laughs> mute yourself if you are not speaking to avoid background noise and feedback. All of our meetings are recorded. Both video and written transcriptions will be made available to the public on the city's website at a later date. If you are not included on the agenda, please be respectful and courteous to our commission members by remaining muted. If you have any audio issues, please send a text message to the following number, 845-399-9072. As an organizer for today's meeting, I reserve the right to lock and pause the meeting to eject anyone who has behaved inappropriately. Uh, lastly, at tonight's meeting, we have in attendance our Arts Commission Chair, Susan Lynn, Arts Commission mm -hmm. members, Peter Criswell, Laura Giordano, Maria Elena Ferrer, Ione, Linda Marston Reed, Ward Mintz, and Lynn Woods. Absent from tonight's meeting is Ann Bailey. Um, for our non commission members, we have uh, Jesse and Richard. And I believe that is everyone that is here. Um, thank you for your patience during these difficult times. And behalf of, on behalf of the city of Kingston, I wish you and your family good health. I now turn over the floor to Chair Susan Lynn, who will continue to call the meeting to order. Thank you. My turn. Um, so we don't have to approve any minutes because we don't have any. So <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, that's okay. You thought it was recording, and you know. Um, so next up on the agenda, we have uh, Jessie. Uh, she's going to talk about the uh, uh, mental health in the community during this unprecedented, weird time. Jesse, are you there? It's frozen. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. I can hear you. Yes. Um, it looks like Jesse has rejoined. There she is. You're are you there, Jesse? Can you see and hear me? Yes. Okay. I Something can... happened where. It just went blank for me. Um, should I get into my spiel? Okay. Sure. Okay. Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for inviting me here. It's the perfect um, place to sort of um, let you all know what's going on. Um, so what is happening is I got hired on by O Positive to um, collaborate with Samadhi, which um, – I'm wondering if you all know it's a recovery center, a holistic recovery center in Kingston. That's really amazing. I've learned a lot about them and how much they really have to offer the community. Um, so we created a hotline, which is um, directly connected to the, so people call Samadhi, they speak to a peer. The peer triages them to one of 30 therapists. Ione is, is on that um, hotline. Uh, she signs up for a shift. There's uh, 30 other and other therapists, and they all sign up for shifts. Um, there is stipends for them. Um, so what we do is we've been trying to get the word out. Um, it was initially for essential workers, which was going to be for like nurses and doctors, and also for musicians and artists, because you know positive. Um, uh, you know, program. It's a project through a positive. Um, we've since opened it up for um, anybody who's really being affected by COVID, which is almost everybody. Um, so I really wanted to come on here and let you all know that it really is for you and any people that work with you or for you um, or that you work with and for. So um, I'd, I'd like to just, you know, let you know that it's out there and I, I'd like to take any questions you might have. The number itself, and I'm going to look at it because I always mess it up and that's not so good to mess up the hotline number. Um, it's 
437-6865. So it's 1-844-4-FRTLN, Frontline. Um, and yeah, I wonder if anybody has any questions about it. Uh, uh, Jesse, uh, oh, go ahead. Um, I'm curious about what kind of response have you gotten, um, particularly from artists since we're the Arts Commission? Um, I'd say it's being underutilized in general. Um, and some of the reason I believe that is, is really because people, you now what I've heard is people are, it's a, you know, it's a stigma to call, pick up the phone and need help. You know, it's just, there's, there's like issues around doing that. Um, we have had about um, 20 calls. You know, we're, we're okay for 348, which is, it was gonna be a time frame thing and now it's gonna be a call thing. Um, so those people got three calls in each, which they're allowed to do three, um, there's funding for them to do three sessions. So I would say there's not enough utilization but it's slowly happening. Is there a, a, a pattern of, the, of what people are calling about uh, in the calls that have already occurred? Um, just, you know, about physical issues, uh, family issues. I, I have no idea, but I, I thought it would help us tell others about it. Um, yes, well, first I'll say that anybody can use it you know, for, for any reason, but it is um, pretty much um, focused on artists, musicians, doctors, nurses, um, people who are working, like pharmacists, clerks, all that kind of stuff. Um, what I've heard from the, from the information that I've collated so far, because I ask all the therapists and the peers to like give a rundown, anything from people who have really been affected incredibly because their housing is at risk, um to people who feel like really lost because they can't they don't even have paintbrushes to do their painting um i've worked with joe to do like packages for some of the people who have been involved with o positive in the past to get them some you know paint and brushes or um and then there's uh, people who just are are really lonely um, and need someone to talk to and haven't had the chance to um, to to have a therapist. And that's really been what I've, the things that I've read so far. Uh, Jesse, is this something that um, the mayor could put in his daily message and the county exec could put in his messages? Yes, it was um, connected to some, I didn't see it, but I know that we have, um, you know, a little bit of a, a media um, person who does that kind of stuff. And I know that she spoke to um, Mayor Noble and I think it was in one, but you're right. I think it would be great if it was an ongoing thing. So I'll make note of that. That's a good idea. Um, I'm happy to list it um, on the COVID artist resources page on the city website. Um, and if you have like a, a graphic or something that ha that you'd like me to share there, I'm happy to do that as well. Yeah, we have um, a great graphic. I have some, um, you know, there's logos and there's an actual flyer and there's quarter pages. So, so I can send that to you, Addie. And I know helpful. you're really busy because I talk, I talk to you a lot with uh, food <laughs> delivery, right? Confirming. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be more than happy to put that on. Um, if you uh, just want to send me an email um, after the meeting tomorrow, um, I can go ahead and get that updated on the website. Perfect. Thank you so much. Addie, uh, when you get that, can you uh, forward that at least to me or anybody else? Because I can put it on our website and our Facebook pages and MAD uh, website and Facebook pages. Oh, that's well. great. Wow, you guys are great. Okay, um, anybody? So, so I'll send it to Addie, is that the best plan? And then she can disseminate it to to whoever's interested. Yeah, I think that'll and, you work know, 
anybody really, you know, who, who, who you, you, you sense around you who really needs some help. That's what it's there for. Um, so I really appreciate Ioni. Thanks so much for getting me on this call. Yes, I wanted to ask you, Jesse, are you going to continue the um, uh, the Facebook streaming info that, that you did last night? Oh, the Zoom call. Zoom call I like about- the I like the idea of Facebook streaming, but I think there's a little um, you know, privacy probably issues with some of that. Um, yes, I I. I would like to um, put together another group of the therapists to talk, you know, and to deepen and widen that conversation. Yeah, I think um, that that'll pick up, you know, people, if you keep it just a regular, people will get the idea, you know, that it's not, it's not scary, it's frightening. Um, and a lot of people just need to have a voice, someone to listen to say hello to. Uh, that the general anxiety is very high. So, totally. Yeah. I have a question about the paint supply, the packages of paint supplies. Have you sent some of those out? And who is O Positive funding that, or how are you getting those supplies? Um, I'll just speak. I don't see who's talking, but um, it says Lynn. Um, we are, you know, we have stuff in the office that 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 that's there a lot you know just sitting around so basically we've we've taken from um that um supply and i think um rf richard your place i think um donated some stuff i forgot the the and hi richard how are you how are you good um it could be we donated i'm not really aware i know we've donated a number of things we've donated uh, uh tyvek suits and um respirators to um um to, to health workers but um uh i'm not i'm not that i didn't know if we had done um art supplies but uh, certainly yeah. you know you did you did a little bit and we're we're just okay. at this point we're just sort of um Figuring out our role, you know, and I think one thing we figured out was the frontline mental health and other things we're figuring out are little care packages for the people who have been involved in O positive, you know, just to sort of um, help them and and um, be, be available, be there in this time. Right, right. I just realized, you know, how, how much of a need people have. And I, I guess we're just starting the process. So we'll find out. Right. I mean, if anybody feels like, you know, they have um, they have ideas, I, I, you know, we're going to have a meeting um, soon and I can just say I spoke to you guys and, um, you know, I think your packages are a great idea. It's just sort of try to figure out what's what's helpful, you know, for people. Right. Thanks. Sure. Um, so, yeah. So thanks. You, you're all very. um supportive and I appreciate it. Okay, anybody have any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank carry you. on your great work. Thanks, and I'll, yes. Thank you, Ion. I'll send the stuff to you, Addy, okay? Sounds good, thank you. Are you gonna get rid of me or do I unplug the Oh, leave. Um, okay. You're welcome to to stay and, and hang out if you want to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you uh, um, want to depart, you just click the little leave button at the bottom. It's like a little phone. Oh, that's my leave button. I have to get going to do something, but I'm actually very interested in what you do. So maybe another time I would be able to do that. Yep, we'll be here next month, second Thursday of every month. We'll be having our meeting. So feel free to join awesome. us. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Good luck with everything. Good. Okay, so next up on the agenda, we have the Distinguished Artist Award. And I hope that um, you all had the opportunity to see Laura's concert the other night. Um, it was great. I mean, she yeah. was. We were there. <laughs> yeah, she was rocking. Um, so there's a little bit of news. Um, because of significant budget cuts, our budget is being reduced for the Distinguished Artist Award. So 
uh, Addy and I were talking today and, and, you know, we still would like to have a reception at some point, um, probably more towards the fall, October, uh, we're thinking. And, you know, we can make a reception ourselves without having it catered. Um, you know, I think everybody on the commission can pitch in and, and help with that. And I, I think it's important that we are able to keep the stipend for Laura uh, so that, you know, and the, the award has already been purchased. So that's, you know, already done. But I know that Anne had uh, said that she would donate that as she did last year. Yeah. But um, so as we get closer, you know, and, and start to actually plan this, I, I will be contacting each of you to see how you might contribute to the reception. Uh, um, they're still going to be doing music in the parks this year. So perhaps, you know, Laura will want to get involved with that. Uh, I think it's going to evolve over the next couple of months. Yeah, and I, I do just want to say, too, that we are in kind of a, a, a good situation with having a distinguished artist that um, is kind of musically driven, um, because I do think that, um, you know, arts and entertainment are unfortunately phase four of this phase four reopening. Um, but I think the nice thing about the Distinguished Artist Award is that um, I think what's important is kind of like the ceremony of it. So I do think that there are going to be some opportunities as we get later into the year to have events. They will look different than what we're used to, but I do still think we have the opportunity to put together something really special, you know, have some words from the community, maybe some performances. So I do think we have some wiggle room there. Um, and, you know, we've been seeing a lot of, um, uh, different kinds of concerts and things. And I think that our, our little mini concert that we had with Laura was a good way of showing she was really kind of ready to go. So she had a lot of her own tools that she could bring to the table. So um, I definitely think we still are gonna be able to put together something really you know, nice and fancy. And I think um, Radio Kingston has already also kind of reached out and offered to give us some assistance moving forward if we wanna do programming like that. Um, so yeah, Lara also just wanted to pass along her thanks to everyone on the commission. Um, she really enjoyed the, the, uh, the Facebook concert and had a really good time just connecting with some new folks who didn't necessarily um, you know, know about her project. Um, and I thought it was so cute when the dog sang, so <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, that was the best. <laughs> I think that for the next performance, we should, uh, if you could get us the make and model of our eyeglasses, I think we'd all like to wear them. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was thinking, I, I actually did like do a whole Laura get up on my end because I was like, listen, if we're going to, we're going to do it, let's do it. So it would be, it might be kind of fun to think about it like that too, about like different fun ways you can just like, you know, have yeah. a good time with it. Susie, is there talk about, uh, as, are you thinking if, if we can be in person? I was I was just imagining down by the water um, at Mayor Gala Park, how nice, how, how fun that could be and people could be spread out if that, or that's going on. Um, but anyway, that's just a thought. I was seeing that happen down there. Everybody? Yeah. These? Yeah, Kingston. Another place would be Kingston Point. There's lots of picnic tables, and there's the uh, and there's the shelters. Mm -hmm. That's another yeah. place we could easily be spread out. Yes. Um, I think that you also want, in thinking about that, you might want to talk to Sarah Litvin because the multicultural festival, I don't think, is happening in the same way. Um, so, and I and that is usually at Gallo Park. So I, I don't know what circumstances were weighed and, and the, how the decision was made. Yeah, um, I think later on in our agenda, we were going to talk a little bit about kind of events. And kind of, so I, I do have like a little bit of information about kind of what that's going to look like moving forward. Um, you know, we're kind of going to get our directives from 
from the higher ups about what the numbers are going to look like. And I think that's what we're all really curious about um, because before we went into like full lockdown mode, that was kind of how they were just giving us a number like, okay, you can have gatherings of up to blank amount of people. And I think we'll probably be transitioning back to that. Um, so I do think that kind of regardless of what happens in the next coming months, I do think we should, uh, as we're planning what our next steps are with the Distinguished Artists Award, we should definitely think of having some diverse strategies that kind of, you know, maybe more than one idea for what we can do. That way we have some flexibility. And then also thinking about if we can combine things. Is there a way you can do kind of like a virtual and an in-person thing? Like that kind of thing I think will be really helpful. So as, as soon as we get more information about things, I'll definitely communicate that with you all so we can kind of think about how we can make that a uh, special moment for our awardee. Sounds good. So, Addy, you want to talk about the cultural master plan? Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling very good. Um, we got the contract signed, which was interesting during COVID. <laughs> I love the, the silent claps. I'm like, hey. um, that was definitely interesting. Um, and I have to say, our consultants are, they are on board. Um, I didn't know you know, kind of what they're, if they were going to be intimidated by this exact opposite, they are so ready to engage. Uh, we just started using this platform called Bang the Table, um, which put together this really professional, comprehensive website for all of our city projects. And we're calling that Engage Kingston. And if you guys haven't gotten a chance to check out that website, we definitely um, take a minute just to go check it out because we'll be doing a lot of some of the arts and culture stuff there. Um, so the nice thing about our consultants, too, is that they're not just relying 100% on all virtual um, because they've worked with so many different communities before. They still kind of understand the importance of having things that are on paper, having, you know, we're all still hoping for those face to face exchanges coming later on. So um, just to let you all know, um, and we'll go over all of this in our kickoff meeting, which uh, we decided the 27th. Uh, was the date that seemed to work for most folks. Um, again, since that's a virtual meeting, it will be able to be recorded. So I do really want everyone to be there just so we can kind of all get to know everybody, but that will be recorded. Um, so we'll kind of go over the schedule for things, but the first two months of the cultural plan is very much research-based. So I've already started getting in touch with our GIS, uh, our GIS person at the city to provide us with some maps. Um, so they're going to, you know, create some uh, overlays of cultural resources, that kind of thing. Um, so they're really excited to get started. And I think this will be a good way to um, kind of centralize our conversations. I've been realizing over these past two months, I've been having great conversations with folks, but they are all in these little isolated pockets. So it's been kind of difficult to create that larger conversation. And I think the arts and culture plan will kind of help motivate some of that thinking. Um, and I, I have talked to the consultants too about you know, the reality of the situation we're in and, and how we can kind of work in some COVID um, conversations in there as well, because I think a lot of our, as we're reaching out to these folks, it's a good time to learn where they're at now where they were at and where they want to be in the future. So I think we're going to be able to, to start a really positive conversation. Um, so definitely looking forward to the kickoff meeting. Um, and I'm really happy that we have a project like this um, getting started now as so many people, as we'll talk about later in the agenda, so many, you know, so many questions are coming up about the importance and the, you know, validity of arts and culture. This is a, this is going to be a document that's going to help prove our point for why we need to protect our funding, why we need to, you know, plan for our future for, for arts and culture. Um, you know, those conversations are coming up now. So to have this project being started, I think, is is going to be really important. So, Addy, this is Lynn. Um, Ulster Publishing, you know, discontinued all its four papers, but they have a website that they're consolidating some news for all the communities, and I'm actually writing for that. Um, so I'm thinking we had talked about doing a story about this, so perhaps um, I'll, I'll be part of that May 27th meeting, listen, and maybe do a story after that. Do you think it's yeah. too soon or the time? Um, no, I think I think it would be good um, now that, you know, it was very stressful before the contract gets signed. Again, the RFP is like a nightmare. So 
Oh, mm-hmm. God, like, so now, now that our um, our uh, our um, contract is signed, um, so once we kind of give them the notice to proceed, we're going to send out a press release, and then I think after that, I think it's you know the more positive news we can put out there, the better. Um, so I do think that the, I th- that's something we should definitely talk about. Um, I might I might wait until after the kickoff meeting just to kind of right. get to know everyone, but. I'll follow up with you about the press release. Perfect. Yeah, and like I said, I'm I'm very excited for y'all to meet the team. It's uh, it's a really really fantastic group of people. They're dynamic, and again, they are not afraid of this virtual. Um, just some of the virtual things that are going to happen, but they're, you know, they're prepared to take that on. Um, and I've I've been I've been feeling really positive about our kind of what the workflow is going to look like. So. Um, <laughs> okay. Any questions? Okay. So, Peter, you want to update us on the Ulster County Legislature? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you so much for everybody who wrote, and there were overwhelming number of letters that came in. So, thank you for that. That was really a great show of support. Um, I'm not sure it's what it's going to do, to be honest. Um, there is understandably very clenched feeling right now in the legislature about monies. And so, um, can't hear you. You can't hear me. Can you hear me, Lynn? Can you guys all hear me? I can hear you now. I couldn't hear the, I can okay. hear you. No, we can so, hear you. So yeah, so um, what they're doing now is they are looking at all the legislative programs and they're going to be in a, pro- I don't know if you've heard this yet, Linda, but they're basically gonna go back to every one of the um, potential, the, the ones that we're gonna potentially fund and ask them to answer two questions. Um, we, we had a whole list of questions and it basically got overwhelming and it, it has now been uh, honed down into two questions and it's basically, are you doing any programming that's related to COVID and relating to essential services for people? And then the second one is, what would the lack of this funding do to your organization? So that's what people have to answer. And um, it's gonna be tough, but you know, again, there was a huge, huge, huge amount of support for the arts and for the libraries and so, you know, the legislature couldn't ignore that just the sheer numbers, but it's it's going to be very difficult decision making for that. So, uh, yeah, so keep keep the pressure on. I think that's the only thing that, you know, you can do is just keep the pressure on. Keep making phone calls to your, your legislator, you know, continue to sort of chime in whatever ways you can. So. Thanks, Peter. Um, I have a question. I know I've been, um, I sent notes out to all of the Ulster County Cultural Promotion Fund awardees, and Mm -hmm. I said, please, if you are in these particular districts, you know, citing some of the ones that we have some issues, you know, please write a first person story about the successes that you have had with this funding you know the seeds that it's planted and all of that um so is is the uh, decision still going to be made on tuesday how this will all because i haven't gotten those questions no they're, they're going to send the questions out the decision is not going to be made on tuesday so all the organizations are going to have an opportunity to answer those questions and then we'll go back in and the my trepidation about this all is I think that they're, it's it's like an apples to oranges comparison, you know? It's yeah, like these, these organizations are not set up to be care provider, you know, they're not housing organizations for people and they're not, you know, so it's like, it's like you're asking an arts organization to somehow be something that it's not. And then you're gonna judge its value on a set of criteria that's not correct for that, for those organizations. So it's, to me, it's a very strange way of assessing what the value is. So personally, I would go down the road of things like uh, 
any jobs that are related to it, uh, any sort of economics that you can think of. Um, and then I would go down the mental health road. I think that's the one that seems like it could have made some play, is you know, how it's affecting people. I think doing this purely on arts, like one of the legislators said something to the effect of, um, you know, how am I going to go back to somebody and tell them that they can't pay their mortgage and then I'm going to support. He didn't say arts in general, but that's where he was going with it. And so, yeah. so that's the argument that we're up against right now with arts funding. And, and as artists, we all know that that's, again, it's apples and oranges that we're talking about, but that's, that's exactly what the conversation is right now. So. Okay. Well, we're expecting the worst, but we're not giving up without a big fight. And it, I'm telling everybody to be sure and write gracious and thankful letters for the past support and to talk about exactly what you're saying, you know, the jobs. I mean, that, that's what it's coming down to is the economics. And we can talk about the intrinsic value of the arts later. <laughs> but right now we need to we need to make sure that some kind of funding is forthcoming. Absolutely. And and I think also there's a lot of conversation, it turns into numbers, and I think the more we can turn it into people, just as that legislator did, oh, I'm gonna go back to this guy who can't pay for his mortgage. Same thing with artists, like they need the support as well. They 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 are people in this equation as equal yep. as anybody else. So yeah. so I think you guys all know, you know, like that those are the those are the talking points. And again, just keep the pressure on as much as possible. Thank you so much for all your advocacy work really indebted to you thank you yeah, thank it's you peter my pleasure and let's keep fighting it absolutely um linda you want to talk about the ulster county arts awards why yes i do so on a very good note uh the committee met today and we have a stunning lineup of uh awardees which i cannot uh tell you about right now but i promise that next probably the end of next week we'll have gone through the whole process all the way and gotten everybody on board but it's very exciting you know every year we do this and i always think there's no way we can we can outdo this there's just no way but um it's it's going to be good and i think that we all need to think about the positive things that have happened and continue to happen and the arts awards is one thing that really you know it shines a light on all these things so Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Last okay. year was <laughs> You're still up. You have art. We're going to talk about Art Walk. Oh, yes, I would love to talk about Art Walk. So uh, we have, we just, we, the Art Walk Committee uh, had a meeting uh, towards the end of April, and we decided that uh, given the things that are going on, we didn't want to approach the artists and ask them, would they be up for doing Art Walk this year until we're going to send a survey out, maybe it's going to hit their mailboxes next week. And some of the questions are things like, you know, in September, if if the, you know, social distancing is in and it's fine to go about your daily stuff, but with the social, you know, all the the parameters in place, would you be willing to participate in our walk? And then it asked two or three other questions where we're trying to gain what kind of participation we could get. And so um, once we get that information, we'll, um, we'll be rolling on it. The dates are September 26th and 27th. So um, I feel like artists can usually, I always say this, artists will lead the way and I feel like artists will come up with a way to uh, make it work. This is a really important event for them and, and also for the city of Kingston. So we want to make sure that it happens. We're already going around talking to people about helping us fund the catalog. Um, and that, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Linda, do you have... Yeah. Are you suggesting strategies to the artists for how they could make this work? Like uh, uh, people will be invited in one at a time and I'll be in another room. And I, I, yep. you know, are there things like that? Yeah, um, we've actually, uh, we're going to send out this picture that we saw, which was quite fun. And it was artists that had mounted a lot of their work on the outside of their house. 
And, you know, I mean, you know, that's, it's not going to be the same as last year, but why not make it happen again? And in a way that we can keep people interested in art and, you know, not forget that we have artists living and working in our community and to find out there was, there's one right next door. So, yeah. Great. Uh, Mr. Mintz, you are up next with public gatherings. Thoughts? I did. I, did. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I think I put it on the, if I suggested it for the agenda so that we could each, so we could all talk about it. Uh, and, um, and I'm how, happy to. Uh, uh, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to share some of the info I got on that uh, call with the county uh, Department of Tourism uh, shared with us some information about large scale events. Um, so, as I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, arts, entertainment, and that we're lumped into an interesting uh, category. It's like arts, entertainment, and education uh, are all on the fourth phase, fourth part of the reopening uh, phases. Um, and it looks like the only way we're going to be having large scale events and again large scale events wasn't defined by a specific number of attendees they just kind of said large scale events what i'm think what the majority of the folks that were on those calls were you know people who were like setting up the garlic festival ulster county fair like those levels of numbers and while i don't necessarily think that all of the information is going to apply to smaller events i do think that just going through the way that they're going to be thinking is important for people to kind of know about. So it looks like um, each individual event is going to have to present a safety plan um, in order to get the permits that they're going to need. Um, the city itself has not come up with a formal strategy for how we're going to be addressing events. Um, if you need like a permit, um, again, that's state so that's a little bit out of our hands. It's not looking great right now. Um, summer programming is on a pretty hard pause. Um, I don't believe that there are gonna be permits issued for um, summer camps and that kind of thing. Um, so, um, and in terms of city events, we are really, we're not looking at too much for uh, foreseeable future. Um, so we are kind of taking a step back on the city side as, as far as events are concerned. Um, so the safety plan is going to be important. That means that you are have to demonstrate that you have a plan for how people will maintain social distancing. You will most likely need to provide at some place free masks or some kind of mask system for attendees. Definitely we'll have to have hand washing stations, hand sanitizing stations. Um, you know, there's even been talk about considering uh, hiring staff that are only there to do social distance enforcement. Um, additionally to that, there are going to be new systems coming around. There is a new uh, tracking uh, squad department um, that is basically focused on understanding how outbreaks happen. So there is a liability thing that I do want people to kind of consider too about, you know, if it turns out that an outbreak is in a result of your event. Um, we live in America, so we have a robust system for um, all sorts of kind of legal steps that can come after that. So I do think that smaller scale events are not going to, I don't think there's going to be like a blanket ban on them. What, from my understanding, is that it's going to be by a case by case basis. And I think that we are probably going to follow the model that other folks have been doing of this kind of safety plan. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at with that. I've definitely been encouraging people to be creative and start thinking about the virtual, but as we all know, not everything is going to be able to live just <coughs> in the virtual world. So um, thinking about how we can continue to have events that just look different. Um, you know, there are going to be um, some things that are just going to go pure virtual, but I do think there are still going to be opportunities for us to gather. Unfortunately, being in New York State, we are um, in the eye of this storm. Um, so unfortunately, we are probably going to be, you know, in this situation for a while. And because of the regional approach to this, which I do think is the, the best approach to it, um, you know, we are a part of a region that is pretty close to New York City. So we 
Uh, we have to keep our numbers down. And once we keep our numbers down, then we can start investigating what can start happening. Um, I do think, uh, like I said, I do think that the safety thing, of course, is going to be the primary concern. Um, so I'm thinking that if folks are thinking of doing summer programming, just keep the numbers as low as possible. Um, and just, again, be flexible with your planning, have multiple strategies, no all eggs in one basket kind of thing. Um, and I'll just keep you guys informed as we kind of come up with a formal policy. Um, Roy, the mayor's secretary, is our new uh, special events coordinator. So getting in contact with him as soon as possible to talk about you know, just kind of what the plans are, I think is the best strategy. If anybody's reaching out to you, kind of wanting to know what to do, um, Roy has been uh, working with the Kingston Emergency Food Collaborative pretty intensely, and that's kind of winding down tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna be seeing some shifts in that. So feel free to reach out to Roy um, just to kind of get that conversation started. Lara? What's Roy's last name? Uh, verse four. Um, I can put his uh, email address in the chat if you give me a moment. Um, Thank you. So that is, sorry to be so like, hmm, but that's that's the information I have um, for events so far. I have a question. Uh, two questions. So the fourth mm -hmm. phase, when is that? That that you're talking about Cuomo's phase reopenings. Mm -hmm. When that is? So unfortunately, we don't know. Um, because it is all based on numbers, because basically what ha what happens is that you have to show that you're no, like that you're not having any new active cases. So that's kind of how the reopening strategy is working is you're proving to the state that your county has a certain number of in, like, you know, has 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 a certain number of cases. Um, also, that's another thing for the large scale events. If you want to have a large scale event, you have to prove that your county has the resources to deal with an outbreak if it does occur. So you would have to prove that you had available ICU beds and that kind of thing. So that's, that's the struggle for us is that we don't have a, a date because it's all dependent on what our, our numbers look like. Right. And my other question is about liability. So are you saying, Addy, that if somebody wants to host an event like an arts event or whatever, that if there was an outbreak, the organizer would be liable? Um, well, I mean, we're not sure. Like I said, I mean, I, I, I was, I didn't mean to say that flippantly. Um, I just meant to more like, uh, will. yeah, yeah. I just, I have a sneaking suspicion that there will be, um, you know, some concerns about that. I mean, I know I would be concerned if I went to an event and afterwards found out, well, you guys didn't do any sanitation, so that's why this happened. That kind of thing. So I don't think that that's necessarily going to be everybody's instinct, but we do have people who, you know, that's their, that's their solution, right. strategy. Right, the safety standards, of course. Right, so that's, I think, another reason why we're probably going to see a lot of caution mm -hmm. in terms of approving events that need approval, um, just because of that question of liability. But also, I mean, again, it's mostly safety. We just don't want to put people in unsafe situations. Peter, sorry. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's not a county by county basis. It's actually a region basis. Right. And the thing that's going on right now is that we're trying to disconnect ourselves with the lower Hudson region because um, mm -hmm. their numbers are so elevated. And so we're trying to actually, I've just been seeing different posts by different groups saying like, let's try and, and I think that's an effort actually that the uh, county is trying to make is to push us mm -hmm. into a, to our own region rather than basing us with the lower Hudson Valley. Is that what right. you're hearing? So we're, we're in the mid well, also the Hudson Valley region. Um, so, and unfortunately, the way that like that whole regional conversation, you can kind of split it up into different ways. But unfortunately, the way that they're looking at us is that they are lumping us into that lower area. So we are definitely trying to move ourselves up into this upper mid Hudson region. Um, okay. But again, that is still based off of each county has to provide information. So that's kind of how we get that bigger regional picture is by each county's numbers, how, what they have available for health services, but then also kind of like what the active cases look like and, and that kind of thing. Right. That, that but even sense. if Ulster is golden, that doesn't matter because 
our new right because if duchess that. is is exactly. having a, a high number we have so much interconnectivity between exactly. our communities it's it's hard for us to do that so that's yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a frustrating thing yeah so I, I can add to that. I was in on a call for the Duchess Regional Chamber of Commerce today. They were trying to get a bunch of folks that run different types of organizations to hear the information and to respond. But um, one of the things that came up in that call, I mean, a lot of you already covered, Addy, I won't go into that, but um, the, the whole liability issue and that even if you have liability insurance and business insurance, a lot of the policies don't have any definitions for how to deal with this type of stuff. So it's not only people coming into your space or coming to an event that you organize, but it's also staff um, and that all goes into workers comp. So, I mean, it's just a real big old mess. I, I have a question about that. Uh, and Linda, when they were talking about liability, so, you know, oftentimes, I mean, we have general liability on our spaces and, you know, general things for, yeah. so in this situation, if you were, you know, set up and everybody agreed you were following all the right procedures and you had the right little liberty numbers, I mean, in certain circumstances, you have, when you register people, they sign off, you know, is that not going to work in this situation? I'm not sure if it will. So um, I heard a discussion, and this was from Ron Hicks, who is Dutchess County um, uh, Assistant Executive. So he, and I'm sure there's somebody, a counterpart that gets from Ulster County, gets on a call every day with the governor and has these discussions. So one of the discussion points they were gonna bring up today was that you know how how to address these types of issues with insurance companies and insurance companies need to come to the table and make everybody feel confident that um, these types of liabilities are not going to get dumped back onto the organization or you know back you know either through workers comp claims or through public lawsuits I, it's just there's there's no um if you if you read through your business liability uh, insurance policy, which I did after that, and I thought, yeah, there's no there's nothing that addresses this at all. Yeah, it's it's a it's a weird situation, and I mean, I, I had kind of yeah. been thinking about this yeah. ever since this started. Was kind of that lawsuit question. I don't know why I'm fixated on that, but I was thinking that was kind of one of the first things that popped into my head was like, okay, not only do you have attendees, but you also have your staff to consider. So I definitely think. It, anybody who's thinking about events, programming, anything like that, definitely just having some conversations with folks that might be able to provide some guidance, maybe coming up with some sort of waivers, anything like that that you can think of. It might not cover you, but it would be a good place to start. Um, I know that we've been having volunteers fill out waivers for the Kingston Emergency Food Collaborative, but we still, of course, are you know, really focused on trying to keep everybody as safe as possible, just so that we don't have to have that other conversation. Right, but things like that are able to happen. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think the one of the reasons why we're in a little bit of a different situation with the um, uh, Emergency Food Collaborative is because there are so many different partners collaborating there. I think that's kind of one of the things that are keeping us a little bit safe there. Um, but it is, it's a huge concern. It's a, it's a huge concern. Um, it's definitely something that we've all been thinking about. So I just wanted to add the other uh, component that we cannot control is that there are still a group of people that with their particular defense of the first and the second amendment amendment they don't want to wear masks they you know all the stuff although it's not happening so much there are a few um, i know about a few incidents in kingston that hasn't escalated but there is people and people is getting nervous so i really think that it's not only the liability but also yeah I won't, I won't expose anybody until everything is more clear. It's not gonna be perfect, but at least those standards that nobody knows exactly how 
they are going to be and then uh, try to do something in a different way and try to keep those social distance. I think it's good for everyone. I have to leave in a few minutes and I wanted to just to add, I know it was not in the agenda, but next week uh, we're going to have a public event to address a little bit of support for this community that doesn't have much to do with that and there are a few artists also that are going to be involved so i will forward you the information guys um and uh and then well i will i'm gonna try to keep an eye in this meeting but i have to go to another one uh so hopefully if i'm done with that i'm gonna come back okay happy birthday yeah happy birthday well, thank you happy birthday Happy birthday, 32. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have, I have another question on the liability thing, only because, you know, uh, so many places, like, I guess because they're essential, you're not allowed to sue them. But if you go to Adams, I mean, there's no way that they, you know, you're distancing. People are out there all over the place, even though they're wearing their masks. Well, they're, they're at the garden centers and they're at the grocery stores and they're at the pharmacies. They're at the liquor stores. They're, you know, they're all over and I mean those places have made modifications so you know what's and are able to do it is it because they're essential or and that's why people won't sue them or no, that's why they're not as worried about the liability I think I think a lot of people are worried about it um, and I think that because this is so new folks have not mobilized yet um, that's why I kind of at our last meeting, I had made that comment about this being something that we're probably going to deal with until the, you know, we're going to be having Corona conversations until at least the end of this year, probably well into 2021. So I think we're going to see stuff like that coming more later on. Um, and I think that right now, because people are in kind of health crisis mode, they're not necessarily mobilizing in that direction. I do just think that that might change as things start to to settle and people start asking questions like that and saying, well, how can you, you know, X, Y, and Z. I think that the whole conversation about essential versus non-essential is also going to get very complicated. I think it already feels complicated, especially for us who work in the arts, who have just been so quickly just shoop, swept aside. It's We know that that's not the answer. And it is hard to define what is essential to whom, because we don't even, you know, even that first, you know, if we were like think back to March, that was one of the first conversations everyone was having is how do you define what is essential? So, and I think those conversations kind of got muted a little bit because things started getting scary. But I do think, um, you know, for, for programming and things like that, you know, I think it all depends kind of what that, like what, what the directive is going to be. You know, is the city going to come out with a policy? Will there be a blanket policy for all events? Will it be case by case? Will it be essential practices only versus non-essential? Like, how is that going to work? That's something that we're trying to figure out because we want to make sure that we communicate it in a in a more clear way. But again, we also have to wait for those directives from um, you know higher up in the chain, and I don't think they have those answers figured out necessarily either. So it's uh, you know we're all in a really difficult position. Um, so and that being said, I don't want to you know make anybody not want to put these plans into effect I do think we should still plan to have some sort of events have program you know that in-person stuff it's just it might not happen so it's good to have kind of like a plan a plan b thing just in case it doesn't work out because we might have a huge upswing we have might have a huge spike in cases at the end of may and then we're not doing anything so i, I do just want to you know encourage folks to kind of have the the dual strategy or triple strategies, you know, has as many different strategies as you can kind of have, just in case. I, I have one more question. Yeah. And uh, that is, it's really, you know, like I keep hearing this, you know, four stages and the fact that arts, entertainment and education, but there's so many, as we know, variables within art, education and entertainment. Uh, so if you have four people in a classroom, uh, an arts classroom making prints, that's art, but it's certainly not the same as a UPAC concert, right? So, I mean, how, uh, what I heard you say was that Roy Ver 
blah, the mayor's mm -hmm. new person in charge of these things, um, that he's somehow gonna look at things and make or find a way to make decisions on individual basis or mm -hmm. or are they gonna like we're not gonna make any arts decisions until the fourth phase yeah um i've been pushing to do the individual assessment i think that's the best way to do it um i think we should have some base guidelines in general just safety practice general safety practice for anything that's happening um the county executive did announce today in his brief that we will not be ending the pause tomorrow on the 15th so that's definitely an indicator that we probably won't be um kind of and i mean for special events as well you know a lot of that those permits and things have to do with like closures and things like that um right now because the pause is in effect kind of any gatherings that are not deemed essential and again um you know those are those are just not supposed to be happening right now so once we kind of get out of the pause and start moving towards actual reopening in our region, then I think we'll probably have some more answers there. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm pushing for the individual evaluation because then I think we have more of a chance for a situation like that to resolve itself in a, in a way where you can understand, okay, there is a distinction between four people in a classroom versus a UPAC concert, you know? So that I, I hope that as we move forward, we kind of have more nuance to our language. I think unfortunately, because everyone's been trying to scramble just to be able to provide some sort of answers, we've been getting a lot of these kind of like broad, pretty opaque uh, definitions for things that we know living in this system doesn't really work. So I'll definitely make sure that I keep communicating on my end that I think we need, um, you know, to, to be looking at things at more of a case by case situation. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, anything else on um, events? All right, Richard, do you want to give us an update on MAD? Yeah. Oh, uh, hello? Let me know yep. when you want me. So I'll, go, I'll go after Richard. Oh, did I miss you, oh. Ione? I'm yeah. sorry. No, okay. no, go. You go, Ione, first. Just real quick, I just wanted to give a, a, um, a quick update on the worldwide tuning meditation, um, which was a gesture of peace and healing in this time of the pandemic. Um, and, um, you know, I think that what's demonstrated here is, is how much how much people just need communion and 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 community and um, as as a healing effect in connection with uh, the arts. So um, we had an, an enormous thing. This was done over uh, five weeks in April uh, on Saturdays, and I think you have the background of it. I'm going to send you all that again if you ever want to look and see what was happening it was very warm it was very very um uh we received beautiful beautiful messages from people as to what it actually meant to them to be able to look at people to sound and sing with them pauline's score uh which has been done all over the world but this is this is a new way to do it uh which i think she would have loved um we reached, uh, as it turned out, 4,600 4, people. Wow. From all, from all seven continents and over 30 countries. Uh, wow. That's pretty amazing. And Arctica included. <laughs> and what? <laughs> What'd you say? Is that including Antarctica? Well, I have to get, I'll get the actual, it says so 37 all continents. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a whole, you know, there's a whole list of of them, that, but we definitely did that. And and people, um, we started including the endings because people didn't want to leave. Um, and and those are also very beautiful. People hanging out, you know, saying where's the after party and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and all different languages and some some people who knew each other hadn't seen each other in years you know that was a very beautiful participatory uh element to it and so i had what we have here for you and uh is um i've compiled i i didn't do it ross did it uh, ross carr 
uh, compiled all five of these meditations uh, together and I'm send, sending you the Vimeo so that you can listen to a little bit and see it a little bit and get the feeling, feeling Great. for it. Um, one, of the, one of the young women who was involved, uh, her name is Raquel uh, Acevedo Klein. Um, and she has something called Music on the Rebound. And what she's doing, uh, in addition to having done this with us, um, she's uh, creating these festivals for uh, artists to do, to perform, but also to receive money for, for what they're doing. So it's uh, there's many, many different festivals going out into the world. There's one tonight, af right after this meeting, starting with uh, Claire Chase performing. And it's it's to help artists who have, have all of these things that are canceled that, that, that we could have been making money on. Uh, she's, she's going to try to make these festivals be uh, an, an additional way to make money and to get the art, get the work out. So uh, that's it all. I just wanted to tell you that and I want to send you the Vimeo because it's so fun. We had a real I just want I want to chime in and say it was such a great thing to participate in. I was in on four, I think, of the five, and uh, I'm now a devotee, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> so this you. is yeah, thank you. it was so so wonderful. Um and it's what's great about it is it's Pauline's vision, um, as our Kings our Kingston composer, uh, her vision uh, as a as a healing gesture. Uh, for the world and 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 people use it that way in lots of different wonderful places. But this one, this was over the top, you know. Yeah. And I I know she, she said, yeah, that's the one, <laughs> that's the one. Also, so uniquely suited to this pandemic worldwide, you yeah, know. Like, exactly. It is one of the few ways people can connect directly in real time around yes. the world. Yes. So continuing to to recognize that and and what can come through you know you think this you know that it that this image is but really the feeling as peter would attest that the feeling comes come through you know beautiful so uh thank you for for listening to that and i'm going to tell you this you can play with this and look at it wonderful you'll send it to all of us yeah i have a uh, i have a little Thing that I wrote, and I'll send it yeah. to everybody. Okay. Thank you. I, would like to, I would like to see it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and for Lara, you know, people people immediately started responding with with artwork, with visual art. So we have. I all saw a lot of the pictures. Yeah, yeah, it was neat. Well, Really fun. I actually was on one of them, and I also <laughs> responded with visual art, but I didn't post it or anything. I just, you know, I the I don't have an ear. You know, and I heard everything. I tried to participate, but it upset me. So I just drew the whole time. So I have a beautiful drawing that I did. Oh, well, I'm glad you did that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, yeah, we've got we've got a gallery full now, so we can add your to the to the gallery. Okay. I'll send it to you. I was I saw you. I was so happy to see your face. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that was the thing. The thing is, it's you know, it's just to be together and yeah. to have a way of being together. It's uh, mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was profound. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Okay. All right, that was that was my report, reportage. <laughs> okay, Richard, you're up. I'm up, okay. I, I have just one question. Peter, is that a mountain lion you have that keeps crossing over? <laughs> he thinks he is, so <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> um, okay, um, for the report from Mad, um, uh, is uh, you know, we've been also as like everybody else, we've been working to um, uh, to to uh, meet the 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 needs. Um, uh and 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 the uh, and the situation uh that we find ourselves in uh funding has of course um uh not not 
completely dried up, but it's but it's uh, but it's been greatly reduced. Um, and uh, we had a huge budget that uh, 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 that we had prepared for this year, and uh, I think we would have definitely met it. Uh, it would have allowed us to expand in ways that we had been going. And of course, um, uh, uh, Lisa uh, Barnard Kelly and I just spent um, two almost complete full days <laughs> uh, trimming it down uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, more realistic expectations. But the main thing is, is that we're realizing is that um, the one thing that we have got to try and, 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 and retain as much as possible is, is sustainability. And in other words, the 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 paying of staff, uh, the making sure we have we're able to 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 keep our structure together and programming, and uh, that 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 when we come out of this at the other end of this, uh, whatever that's going to be, uh, I hope it's not a cliff. Um, uh, that 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 um, you know that we're there. That, that we don't come out, you know, we're, we're trimming everything, we're saying, oh, it's all for emergency. And we need to be able to say, it's not just all for emergency. It's also got to be for what we're going to have when we get out at the other end, that we're going to be, uh, because this is not just entertainment, this is economy. And it is, uh, and there are many jobs um, that are dependent on it. Uh, and, so, um, and so a lot of what we're, um, we're looking at you know is further collaboration uh we've we've um um we've done the uh uh the, uh there's going to be the um uh the kingston annual uh which is a um part of art walk uh but is a collaboration now between uh mad and um uh and um uh, oh, the art society of kingston hello oh that's somebody said uh, pardon? It's all good, Richard. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought somebody said something. Um, the uh, and there's also um, uh, this this year the Red Goat Award uh is going to be presented during the Todd Samara uh, um uh award uh during Art Walk uh and um uh I'm sorry. It's going to be with along with the Todd Samara um, uh, 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 Art Award, uh, uh, and it's going to be during Art Walk, and it's going to be another, a further collaboration that, that, uh, that we're doing. And the, um, uh, there's also, along with that, there's been a, a long, a, a sort of in line with what Jesse was talking about and, and that O Positive is doing, uh, is that we've had the, um, distribution of uh of 50 art packs this was largely an initiative i think of ann's um uh of to uh african-american communities through liz baker and so far 50 art packs have been given out um uh to uh to families and more getting being gotten ready hmm. the um the perhaps the biggest thing though that, that we're doing is what's going to be happening this summer uh with uh, the celebration of the arts. Last year, it was, you know, we finally developed, had, had evolved to having the expo, uh, which is in no way possible this year. And we're going to have a summer pavilion, uh, which I'm going to ask Laura to talk about because um, it is your thing, it is your baby. <laughs> so if you'll take over on that, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. how that's going to happen. Well, we hope we're always optimistic. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the draw was going to be working in the summer, um, and we already had funding uh, through Arts Mid Hudson, through the library, Kingston Library, and uh, we were going to be working with the YMCA Starfish Camp. Not happening. Okay, the library is now just. I mean, they're critical shape too, but they. They don't know how they're going to open and you know what it's going to look like, but they're certainly not going to be doing an art lab with 15 kids in a small room in the library. So done, right? Um, and then we had also applied for the first round of CDBG money and uh, received some money there. So we had about $9,400 that we that would pay artists for summer programming, 
And um, since they weren't going to do it in outdoor seemed like the place to do, we did put in a proposal um, for the last emergency uh, CDBG, you know, probably snowballs chance in heaven. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the idea was uh, creating a month long outdoor arts pavilion that would be uh, six youth and four adults. You know, the idea of having somebody to do distancing, taking them to the potty, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the idea that we'd be creating an art garden so it wouldn't be your traditional, like, here, mommy, here's my beautiful thing. Uh, it would be creating public art uh, in that space. Um, we would divide it up into, so this is the original idea. The idea is um, over the month, we divide it up into kind of three segments. Uh, so we'd have first, second grade, third, fourth grade, fifth, sixth grade. We'd be done by about three o'clock. The pavilion, we work maybe five days a week or four days a week with the uh, kids. And then uh, the art expo features in, in terms of, uh, again, that same kind of idea, maybe just we have six people or four people coming in at a time to create a piece of that art garden, you know, so adult artists could participate in different ways. So kind of a community public art project that if we're lucky, if all things align, we would like to have it at the Polly and Oliveras Plaza, um, you know, set up the, so kind of a temporary art center on that space um, that can be used by, yay, by all, um, you know, all the arts community, uh, but organized through Mad and Draw, right? Um, the idea is small, not good. The idea is intimate, not large. It's collective, you know, it's not collaborative in the same way that we think of collaboration, right? But it is collaborative in the same, it's opening up this space. I truly, I don't know, I mean, I can go in my garden, you know, and I can do that. And I love being all by myself in my studio, you know, that, I love that, but I can't imagine uh, being a kid and not having access to other kids, even if it's just two or three at a time, or being outdoors. And then, you know, like creative, it's not just creative play, but they, you know, they've been doing all this rote work at school, you know, all on the computer, all just, you know, uh, forget about differentiated learning styles. You know, they're all having to do it the same. And many of them have bailed. So the idea of doing virtual, I mean, lots and lots of people are doing virtual and doing a great job at it. We don't have, at least I feel, we don't have the expertise, definitely. We don't have the staff at all. You know, we don't even have any full-time staff. Um, so I didn't feel like doing something virtual if we wanted to do it well. Uh, but even then, I just, I'm so, I just feel for people wanting to be in communion. So even if it's at four people at a time, great. And that creates this collaborative project outside so um we've applied we have the staffing paid for through those you know uh, for our summer programs the library and the y have agreed you know to um pay for those staff for this summer and hopefully the y and uh the library will send us some of those kids you know i don't know how what's that's going to look like because they don't either um and then we'll program the rest of it basically we need about nine thousand dollars to put up a tent Porta potties, hand sanitation station, you know, storage. Um, and again, it would be up for a month. So then the idea is the expo, instead of doing a virtual thing, again, as so many people are doing, and sometimes it's great, but uh, this way it can, instead of taking place over a day or a few hours, it takes place over a month. And it really, and it's something that people can witness growing, like the work will grow in the space over the course of that four weeks. So it'll also hopefully benefit the community just to see that hope, you know? So that's our idea and we're sticking to it until they say we can't. And then we'll <laughs> figure out, we're working on alternatives. You know, if it's not uh, in terms of site, if it's not uh, our first choice would be, of course, the Pauline Oliveras Plaza. Um, the Y has a space they planned a park on that isn't being built yet. Um, so it's possible that we could put it on Y property, uh, the pavilion and all that kind of stuff. The reason, of course, having it in Midtown is just because um, it's such a, when that tent was there, albeit the tent that was there was a problem. Um, 
but when that tub was there, it was such a symbol and so many different, you know, different people used it. We used it for a celebration of the arts once. Um, this won't be that tent, but uh, it was a real symbol and it was kind of beautiful to have it there. And um, so to put it back in kind of is marking our territory uh, for creativity and hope. And we're of course wrapping around well-being because those kids are and and human beings in general you know they need community and they need to be able to be free and creative so um that's that's it okay so anybody have anything else they would like to talk about um i just want to mention um the todd samara art fund committee we met recently about the call to, for this year's awardee and uh as you may recall, the award is annual. It's twelve hundred dollars this the second year. So we've we just came up with the call and we're we're changing it this year because last year it was based on a project, and this year we also are saying it could be based on need. Um, and I was wondering, Addie, could, we will be posting that on the Mad website. Is is there a place on the city website that we could post that? It would be a call for applicants for the award, and then we're saying that all the applications will be due July 15th. But I um, wonder, could the city also post that somewhere? Um, I think I could put it on my um, artist resources page um, because of that addition of the need thing. Um, I'm definitely also totally more than happy to share that on my personal page and then to also ask Summer if when y'all post the um, the link on Facebook to see if maybe the city can do a repost. Um, we've been getting a lot of requests for that, so it's, we've kind of been trying to figure out how we amend our um, social media policy since we're in this like strange time now. So that's definitely a conversation I'll bring up with Summer. Okay, thank you. And and then Richard mentioned a collaboration. So that collaboration was going to be the announcement of the winner, which was going to be at the Hudson Valley Maritime on that right. Saturday art walk and Ann and I just talked briefly about it about whether that's going to happen or not um and I guess it's just an open question about where how it would happen I mean it seems possible maybe you could even be outside I don't know but I guess we'll just have to figure that out later hmm. and Linda I, I don't I, I you know that was going to be part of art walk we wanted to bring the Hudson Valley Maritime into it in that side room that conference room but so yeah, we just that's a great great yeah. location hopefully it will but we're definitely moving ahead with the award obviously <coughs> well yeah. that's good to hear um i think um yeah and like i said I, I i will just try to keep you guys as informed as i can as as more information rolls in about what's happening where and and kind of where we're at with things um uh, just because I think an open line of communication is going to be, you know, it just has proven to be kind of the most important thing. Um, so good to know that that award is happening. Um, when links and stuff are up, uh, let me know and I'll get it on the resources page and then see what other um, things we can offer. Thank you very much. Of course. Okay, anything else? Um, oh, so, I do have one thing. So I will send a uh, reminder. Um, Lord, uh, the Lord Cultural Resources uh, should be sending a formal calendar invitation for the kickoff meeting, but I might just put that together just so everybody has it there just in case. Um, and then when they send it along, you know, I'll just forward that as well. Um, Patty, what time is that? Um, it's at 2.30. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll just send that. Uh, in my uh, follow-up email, just that we all have that together. Um, and there's nothing like you need to bring or anything. They are, it's going to be a, you know, Zoom meeting, there'll be a presentation, that kind of stuff, and we'll all just get to know each other. Sounds good. All right, well, I guess it's time to adjourn. And um, I move that we adjourn. We <laughs> do we still have to you're do moving? that? I'll second oh, it. <laughs> I third it. Anybody <laughs> opposed? <laughs> Stay healthy, everyone. I want okay, to go yeah. another hour. Nice, nice, to see your, see nice to see your shining faces. Yeah, Take okay. care.
And you are. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.